If I had to teach one story about the Reconstruction Era, one person that I think embodies the period, it's this man named Prince Rivers. It's a remarkable story. Prince Rivers was a slave in South Carolina. He was a coachman for one of the plantation masters in the low country of South Carolina near Buford. When the Union Army occupied the Sea Isles of South Carolina along the Atlantic coast, in 1862, he decided to seize his opportunity. He stole his master's carriage and he fled to freedom behind Union lines. And he was an impressive figure. He was literate, he was older, he was commanding, he was a natural born leader. And so when they began recruiting men into the Union Army, he became the first color sergeant of the first South Carolina volunteers. He was there on Emancipation Day at Port Royal, South Carolina, in a famous scene that was uh, depicted in the newspapers and reported across the North. He accepted the flag of the Union and he announced that he would never let it drop before he would die and he promised to show it to the old masters. Uh, he became a kind of celebrity during the war. He was a hero. His uh, colonel, Thomas Wentworth Higginson, the man who led him in the regiment, said he had more administrative ability than any white man in the unit. And then after the war, he uh, became a landowner and a politician. He was a trial judge in South Carolina during the Reconstruction period. This is the success story. But there's this period of redemption when white Southern Democrats took back control of the Southern states from carpetbaggers and Republicans in the South. And in that period, there was violence and there was prejudice rising and Prince Rivers came under assault. And in South Carolina, it reached its apex at something called the Hamburg Massacre. Rivers was also the leader of the black militia and they were celebrating July 4th. Uh, in 1876, and uh, whites got offended by that in Hamburg, and later there was violence, and the trial judge was none other than Prince Rivers, and he tried to be even-handed in the handling of the case, but the whites in the town persecuted him, harassed him. Eventually, they drove him out of office. At the end of his life, he was forced back into a job as a coachman in order to survive. Now, he was still free, but nonetheless, there's something tragic about the rise and fall of Prince Rivers that I think embodies the whole story of Reconstruction.